Hey, it's Jen. Have you ever listened to one of the episodes and thought to yourself, oh, I wish I could leave a response to that, or I wish I could leave feedback or ask a question? Did you know there's actually a way to do that in Spotify now? I know, it's super cool. So if you head over to Spotify and search for Java with Jen podcast or Java with Jen hearing God's voice for everyday life, you may have to search all of it. And then you go and check out my most recent episodes. There are polls and Q&A options that you can weigh in on and I can connect with you that way over here on this platform. I usually use Instagram to connect with you guys, but now with this feature from Spotify, it's a super cool way to engage with the content of each episode and talk to me directly. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So go head over to my latest episodes on Spotify and let's do that right now. How do you find the motivation to get through your day when it just feels like the grind? When I had little ones, diapers everywhere, snotty noses, and it was the same thing every day, gosh, it felt so easy to fall into that trap of same old, same old. Whether you're working or whether you're at home with your kids, any of us can fall into this trap. But I'm going to share with you something the Lord shared with me that really opened my eyes to how to infuse every day in any job, in any industry, with a profound sense of calling and purpose to what you're doing. Stay tuned while we tackle these things in today's episode. Hi, you're listening to Java with Jen with your host, Jenilee Samuel. Maybe you felt like when you signed up for your job, man, I signed up for the screensaver. Like, this is not okay. I am stuck in this job with this daily grind. And I will say, yes, there comes a time and a season where we transition out of a job, out of a season. And frequently, there there can be a sense of discontentment or um, this doesn't fit me anymore when it's time to change seasons. But that's not always the case. Sometimes we simply lack a sense of purpose and vision for why we're doing what we're doing. There's an illustration of three men that are laying bricks. And a gentleman comes along and says to the first gentleman, what are you doing? And he says, I'm laying bricks. He comes along to the second man and he says, what are you doing? And he says, I'm earning a paycheck. He comes along to the third man and he says, what are you doing? And the third man says, I am building a cathedral, a house for God. These three men are doing the same job, but they all have very different perspectives, very different purpose. And this purpose, as you can imagine, fuels their level of energy and love for what they're doing. So then the question becomes, what do I do? How do I get a sense of purpose? I need my job. I can't just up and quit my job and go try to chase some ethereal sense of destiny because, hi, I have bills to pay and a family to take care of. But how do you manage those responsibilities without getting lost in the day-to-day grind? Many of you, um, like me, and that may be even part of why you listen to this podcast, are people who you're like, you know what, I want my days to count. I want to have an eternal impact. I realize that we are eternal beings and there are people on this planet that God loves and he has a purpose and a mission. So how do I make sure that what I'm doing has an eternal impact? This is actually what I was asking the Lord this morning. I was like, God set before me only those things that have eternal value. In fact, I, I've been in ministry my whole life and in the last, you know, five, six years, the Lord started pulling me into the fashion industry. And so I style people. I just styled a client this last week. I go in their closet and help them learn how to dress for their body and dress for their season and dress for who they feel they are on the inside. And um, as much as I get to experience uh, how it can touch someone's heart, I mean, there have been many times when I'm like, God, really? Like, I love this. I feel like it's a privilege, but I need to see the eternal value in this. Or the fact that I do social media managing for a local business. I love that I'm helping their business, but I'm like, social media. I'm like, God, am I wasting time? (laughs) Am I wasting time? Eternity is ever present. Jesus is coming soon. People are dying and going to hell and you love your children. And how do I make sure what I'm doing is making an eternal impact. And so this is what I was praying. And maybe you've asked this. And I want to share with you what the Lord responded to me, okay? He said to me, 
Babe, anything that you do, it is the love that's inside of you for others that gives it eternal value. Love always finds a way to minister to people. Love always leaves a mark. Love creates a thirst that draws people to my waters of life. Love leads people to me and it bears fruit. Do what your skills are. Work with your hands, but do it with love as unto me and you will infuse whatever you're doing with eternal significance. I was like, okay, my mind is blown. (laughs) And he's so true. So then, of course, I start digging. I'm like, okay, I need to make sure this is scriptural. So I start digging through these different scriptures, and I find, honestly, a number of passages, especially in the New Testament, where I didn't see, I didn't see the mentality of ministry is more virtuous. In fact, I have found many times in my experience with people, I'll tell people I'm in ministry and they immediately respond with a sense of, oh, that's wonderful. Even people who are not believers, they're like, that's so wonderful. You're serving God and you're doing these virtuous things that are noble and and good, you know, and there's, there's this automatic swell of support because I'm in a virtuous industry. But the interesting thing is when I started getting into fashion, I'll tell my fellow believers, even friends, about cool new doors the Lord's opened for me or new ways I've been able to use these gifts. And I met with, like, weird, awkward silence. And I'm like, I don't understand. This is so different. And I realized that people in general don't always understand how any industry that you're in can be eternal. And But I do see that in Scripture. In fact, in Scripture... It's all about the character and the spirit in which you do your work. In fact, hard work and working with your hands is a recurring theme throughout scripture of like, take care of your family, pay your bills, do your work, use your talents to serve the greater good, but do it in godliness. And so I feel like as I've looked through scripture and hear this from the Lord, I see this overwhelming message of exactly what the Lord said to me, which is whatever you do, do it in love. Whatever you do, do it in righteousness. And this will infuse everything you do with a sense of purpose, just like those guys at the cathedral. One was doing it. He was thinking literally only about the task. He was probably in a job that he hated. I am laying a brick on top of a brick. <laughs> I have a dear friend, my sister, who kind of hates her job, you know, and it's it's tedious. And honestly, I've been in jobs that got tedious. Even in the styling industry, it kind of got to a point where it felt like the same thing over and over and over. And there there is something inside of us. We want a continual challenge. We want to continually grow and move and become better and learn new skills. That's just how God wired us. And so a job can feel tedious, But if you have to maintain that job and stay in that place and you feel like that's where God's put you, then it's imperative that you have a sense of purpose that drives that tedious activity. And looking at your workplace or looking at the children whose diapers you're changing all day, when you look at the fact that God put you in that place, even if just for a season, to love the people around you and love as hard as you can possibly love. Look for opportunities to minister to people. Look for opportunities. Be like, God, you put me here. I'm an extension of you. I'm working as unto you. I'm going to work with excellence. I'm going to do my very best. I'm going to bring creative ideas because if you were my boss, I would serve you like this. And not only that, but God has infused you with a sense of calling to anywhere your feet tread, anywhere that he has planted you, you have a calling there to those people that are around you. I've heard so many believers say, I'm praying for a new job because I'm the only believer there and it's a really discouraging environment to work in. And I get that. I totally get that. But I always challenge them. I'm like, listen, you're probably in that job because God put you there because you're the only believer there. Who else? He needs you there. He has a purpose for you there. You need to start praying for your coworkers and you need to start loving your coworkers. Like start asking God to make you an extension of him in that workplace. I get it. There are some workplaces that are straight up toxic, bad, awful, evil. Listen, God is bigger than that. Like 
God puts godly righteous people in unrighteous situations because we are meant to bring righteousness into that situation. The it is love that overcomes evil, right? The light expels the darkness. It's it's God is going to put you in places that are uncomfortable because he has confidence that you can bring the light into that environment. And so when you look at your daily grind, look at what you're doing that may not have a real obvious sense of purpose or destiny to it, if you will say, you know what, God, you have put me here, me in the fashion industry, you've put me here doing social media for for these local builders. And honestly, I love it. I feel like the Lord has blessed me with what I'm doing because I get to use my skills. I get to be creative. I get to make my own schedule and I'm helping people. And so for me, that's like the sweet spot and I love it. Um, But in contrast to doing ministry, I've had to wrestle through, is this making an eternal impact? And the over overwhelming response I hear from the Lord is yes, because the point of anything is the people behind it. If you're in a secular job, the people behind it are why you're there. If you are serving at McDonald's, the people that meet you at the counter, the people behind the counter, the boss that you're serving, they are why you're there. Love is the reason why you're in your job. I heard a recent podcast about business, and he was talking about how there's various levels of people's um, sense of purpose within their environment. And they are people who have to be there, people who have no choice but to be there, people who want to be there, people who get to be there, and people who feel called to be there. Where do you fall on that spectrum? Do you have to be at work? Do you have no choice but to be at work? If you have to be at work is that you have to provide for your family. You have to have a paycheck. You don't have any other options. You have no choice but to be there. Probably similar. You want to be there. Maybe you're retired, but you like working. That's good. That's going gonna, gonna to be a more enjoyable environment. You get to be there. You see it as a privilege. Like, I don't know how I got this job, but I get to be here. Or you realize having a job is a blessing. Not everybody has a job and not everybody has a way to pay their bills. So it's a blessing to be here. But the, the highest level of, of uh, performance in a job is to have a sense of I am called to be here. This is what drives people to sign up to volunteer, to work for free. If you're doing what you would do for free, you have found the thing that you have a sense of calling to, okay? And and that may just be you feel called to the vision that's been shared. Maybe it's not your forever calling. It's seasonal. But we go through seasons to prepare us for the next season. Colossians 3.23, we've probably, many of us have heard this, but the Bible says, work willingly or happily at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember, the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master that you're serving is Christ. I love that, like we even see it in the story of Joseph and various Bible characters That when they served diligently and they served with excellence and faithfulness, the Lord is the one who promoted them. But he promotes them because he's able to release favor to their work, favor to what they're doing to cause them to prosper. And the people around them see it. They take note and they they promote them because they're like, you're valuable to me. I don't want to let you go. And so when you work unto the Lord, you are not only benefiting yourself, but you're benefiting the people around you because then your life becomes a blessing to all the people around you. Um, 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12 says, work with your hands as we have just taught you. And right before that, it was a section of, of scripture that was all about how to work and how to live in love. So he's saying, work with your hands in love and people who are not believers will respect the way that you live and you will not need to depend on others, meaning you'll be self-sufficient. Like God will bless you in such a way that you will be the lender, not the borrower. You will be the head and not the tail. And even unbelievers will respect your lifestyle. But that, it doesn't say work in the house of God. It says just work with your hands. What is it you're passionate about? I love telling people this, that part of the clues to your calling is the things that you do, your gifts are the things that you do the very most naturally, the easiest, with the least amount of effort. Those are your giftings. And your giftings are a key to your call or a clue to your calling because the Lord 
gifts us to equip us for the thing that he's put inside of us. Now, honestly, we see all throughout history, all throughout the Bible, that we are prepared for years and years and years before we experience this stepping into the fullness of our calling. I think the Lord will cause our gifts to be pulled on throughout that process so you can have a sense of calling because you're using your gifts no matter where you are. Because I believe the Lord carefully ordains our steps, as the word says, and he prepares us strategically in hard situations, in good situations, in hard, in good, in hard, in good. And he does this to strengthen our character, and to fine-tune our giftings and work us towards the point of our calling, which is honestly every day could be the fulfillment of the calling God has on your life because tomorrow's not promised. Today could be the very thing that you've been called to. Maybe that's answering phones for T-Mobile. Maybe that is a waitress. Maybe that is a janitor. Whatever you're doing right now, this could be the very thing God called you to. Think about that. This could be the very thing you've been working towards your whole life because we don't have tomorrow promised. So work as if this is the thing you've been called to. When I was in college, I worked for a a ministry and I used to have to make phone call after phone call. I think we used to make between 40 and 60 phone calls a day. Most of them were voicemails. And honestly, it got really old. (laughs) It was so easy to be like, oh my my gosh, I don't want to make any more phone calls. Um, but the Lord gave me that epiphany one day because they are also, it was, it was an environment that was very fueled with what's the vision for your life and what's God building you towards and blah, blah. And so I remember always being very consumed with these great plans that God had for my life. But then I came across that scripture that says tomorrow is not promised, so make the most of today. And I just remember thinking, holy crap. If tomorrow is not promised, let's say I was to die tomorrow, then right here today making this phone call, this is the epitome or the climactic moment of the thing I was called to. Like this was what everything's been moving towards. Oh my gosh, then I better be a good steward because if I can't be a good steward today with this season, who's to say I'm going to be a good steward or recognize the value of the next season? I have to be diligent. I have to be faithful. And the way to infuse your work, like I said, is to infuse your work with love. Loving God, loving people. This is always at the bottom of anything we do. I have, I've I've had college students ask so many times, how do I know if I'm doing what God has called me to? Truth be told, or maybe they'll ask, maybe they'll ask, I've been praying and praying. And, and I just don't feel like God is answering if I should major in this or major in that, or if I should quit school and go do this, or if I should uh, move over here and go to this school or stay here and go to this school. And, you know, and it could be various options for your various seasons. I have one friend who has a business and she's like, I don't know if I need to stay home with my kids and just sh- and shut up, shut up shop, or if I need to stay in my business and pray for some solutions. And, you know, I told her, I was like, If you feel like both are good and you don't feel clear direction either way, maybe the Lord's just saying he could bless either, you know, like the point is whatever you do, whatever you put your hands to, do it as unto the Lord, do it to love people because God can bless whatever we're doing. But the point is do something. (laughs) You're not waiting around for life to happen. You're not waiting around for magical moments. Literally do what's in front of you. Put your hands to the tasks. Use your giftings to bless the people around you. Do all of it to serve others and and lift up God's name and glorify him. And and if you do it fueled with love, you're going to make people thirsty for God, who is love. It's that simple. And so I hope that this helps you as you think about your daily job, your daily grind, whether it's kids, whether it's a career, whatever it is. If you stay home with kids, a career can look so enticing. If you have a career, staying home with your children might look more enticing. You know, it's like whichever side of the fence we're on, there's always something that looks more appealing on the other side. And so I wanted to leave you with this thought, though. David Lloyd George is quoted as saying, There's nothing so fatal to character as a half-finished task. As you're looking at your daily life, your daily grind, and, and maybe your sense of discontentment there is because a season is coming to an end. That is a possibility, but you need to be led by the peace of the Lord. Be led by his voice in that. 
But do everything that you can to be faithful in this season. Don't give in to senioritis. Don't give in to, I'm just unhappy here, so I'm going to look for something else. No. Anybody can look for another job. Anyone can decide that they're bored. In fact, we have an epidemic problem of that with the younger generation, and I'm in that generation, and I understand. We have an epidemic of people so highly stimulated with ideals that we get bored with real life and with um, the challenges of developing our character in today. But listen, there's nothing more fatal to your future and your character as a half-finished task or a half-finished season or a a half-invested job. Like being half-invested in what you're doing, that's fatal to your character because that's forming your character. And you're going to take that into your next season. But the thing is, God won't graduate us to the next season until we have proven faithful with this one. So let me encourage you, be diligent with your season. Be faithful with what is right in front of you. And the way you can do that is infuse all of your work with love. It's not about what you're putting your hands to. It's about how you're approaching it and how how you're treating the people and around you and the task that has been entrusted to you. Are you doing it faithfully with excellence? Are you loving the people around you and showing support to your boss um, by responding with love? I know it's not easy, and that's what makes it important. What's not easy is important because that is what is forming you into the person you need to be for what God has for you next. It's always hard before a promotion. Always. All ways. <laughs> so if it's hard, take heart. The hardship is likely a test, which is aka miracle grow for your inner man and for your character. Literally hardship is uncomfortable, but that is literally what makes you into the bigger man, the bigger woman, the bigger person for the things that the dreams that are in your heart. We often don't realize the weight and the depth of character that's required for the things that are in our heart to accomplish, but God knows, and God loves you, and God wants your success more than you want your success because he wants you to be a light in the darkness. So I hope this was encouraging to you that whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Ephesians 4, 16 says he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Do your part. You doing your part helps everyone else grow and it causes the body, the whole of us, to be healthy and full of love. We need you. We need you to do your part. We need you to see your job, your day-to-day with purpose. And that purpose is love. Now, don't go anywhere because your favorite part of the episode, Life Hacks with Jen, is coming up next. Does your husband ever complain that it's just tough knowing what to give you as a gift, but you know he really wants to win in this area? Well, stay tuned because in this life hack, I'll be telling you what I've implemented with my husband that helps him win every time. Okay, so if you and your husband are anything like us, we have had the hardest time uh, figuring out gift giving. My husband in particular, it's just not natural to him. But, you know, us women, we always love receiving gifts. And so uh, we finally figured out after many anniversaries and birthdays and Valentines that were (laughs) full of tears or just disappointment, um, I finally decided, you know what? I am going to create an Amazon wish list that I will share with him. And then when it's time to buy me gifts, say it's some special occasion or whatever, he doesn't feel so lost. And yet it's something that I'm not keeping you know, on the front of mind. So then whenever you purchase this stuff, it still feels like a surprise. So this has actually proven to be really great. And we just set up the list where when he purchases something, it disappears. So I can't see that it's been purchased. And I just, the only thing is you have to kind of maintain it. So like go in there every month or two and just update it, get rid of things you're not interested in anymore or whatever, but it has worked out great. And there have been like 
one birthday, he had just gotten back from a missions trip, and so he ordered the gifts for me while he was overseas. And so they arrived by my birthday, and he just came and like laid a bunch of gifts on me whenever I woke up that morning. And it was just great. And they were all things that I wanted a little while ago, but maybe forgot about or just didn't have the budget for. And uh, so it was just a wonderful surprise. <laughs> but you do, you do have to update it because I had actually put a purse on there that was for my sister. She's in mermaiding, and it was very like, very uh, iridescent and mermaidy, and uh, he didn't know that it was for my sister, and so he ordered it for me. So I used it a couple times, and then I re- <laughs> re-gifted it to my sister. So you do got to maintain the list, but it has worked out really great. So I hope that little tip helps you, and I hope you and your husband or you and whoever it is that's buying you gifts can find a better groove that keeps both of you satisfied. All right, thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Don't forget to share it with a friend if you enjoyed what you heard, and hit the subscribe button, share on social media, and I look forward to seeing you at the next episode. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's show. For those of you who've rated or shared this podcast on social media, thank you. It really means a lot to me. And don't forget, you can always email me with questions or comments at javawithjenpodcast at gmail.com. And for links or show notes, just go visit my blog at jennaleesamuel.wordpress.com. Until next time, you've got this and God's got you.